Good evening. On behalf of the League of Women Voters of the Morris area, NAACP of Mar the Morris County branch, the Morris County Chamber of Commerce, and the Daily Record, I am pleased to welcome you to our Morris County Commissioner's Debate. My name is Kathy Abbott. I am one of the co-presidents of the League of Women Voters of the Morris area, and I've been a resident of Morris County for 30 years. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization, and therefore we never support or oppose political parties or candidates. Elections and voting are our core concerns, and empowering voters defending democracy is our mission. We are committed to providing fact-based information about issues and about the positions candidates take on those issues in order to help voters make their own decisions and participate in the electoral process. Membership in the League is open to all ages and gender identities. We welcome volunteers whether or not you are a member. With 100 years of experience, the League is one of America's oldest and most trusted, trusted civic organizations. I'd like to welcome our co-sponsors for this debate. Vanessa Brown of the NAACP, the Morris County branch, to say a few words. Um, before I do that, I will also say that we have two other co-sponsors, the Morris County Chamber of Commerce, which um, connects businesses with each other and to the resources they need to succeed. Morris County Chamber of Commerce thanks the candidates for their participation and the County College of Morris for hosting the Le and the League of Women Voters. The Chamber has a very active government affairs forum in partnership with the ELC that provides a forum for business leaders to hear from other, from elected officials. The third co-sponsor is the Daily Record and uh, their representative also could not be here tonight. The Daily Record has covered Morris County since the year 1900 and is, and is happy to co-sponsor this event. And now I'd like to welcome Vanessa Brown of the NAACP, Morris County branch, to say a few words. Vanessa is third vice president of the New Jersey NAACP State Conference, president of the NAACP Morris County Branch and Northern New Jersey Branch President's Coordinator. Vanessa is also the Morris County Ambassador. Vanessa, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Welcome, everyone, and, and thank you so much for participating. Again, my name is Vanessa Brown, and this is a wonderful opportunity for the community to listen to your responses to the questions that they sent in. The NAACP uh, was formed around 1909. We're the oldest, boldest, and baddest civil rights organization. We are nonpartisan, but very political. And again, we thank you for being here. Uh, you'll find freedom funds all around the state. We have about 44 branches in New Jersey. Uh, we have about 15 of them under my auspices. But again, I, I applaud you all for taking the time to answer the community's questions and let them see exactly what it is you do. Again, thank you for the opportunity uh, for presenting. Thank you, and take care, and all the best to all the candidates. And now the League of Women Voters encourages everyone to go to vote411.org, a one-stop site for information on all aspects of voting in New Jersey, including statements on the issues from your candidates. And please visit our website to learn more about the Morris Area League. Remember to make your vote count in one of three ways. Vote by mail ballot if you signed up for that, early in-person voting using a voting machine from now until November 3rd, or in-person voting on Tuesday, November 5th. This forum is being live streamed on the Morris Area League of Women Voters YouTube channel and will be available here for viewing afterwards. Other language captions will be available tomorrow on the stream. We encourage the sharing of the League's recordings of this event in its entirety. 
but do not allow editing or making public any excerpts from the recording. The league name, logo, logo, event recording, or any materials from this event cannot be used in a way that could lead a viewer or reader to infer league support of or opposition to any candidate. At this time, I would like to introduce our moderator, Anne Armstrong. Anne is a league-trained moderator who is not from this voting district. She will introduce the candidates and outline the format for this evening. Thank you, Kathy. On behalf of the sponsors of this event, I'd like to welcome you to the forum for the Mor Morris County Commissioners. As mentioned, my name is Ann Armstrong, and I'm not a resident of Morris County. Before introducing the candidates, I'd like to explain the format for this forum. Each candidate will give a brief opening statement. After the opening statements, the candidates will be asked previously submitted questions in rotating order. All candidates will have the opportunity to answer each question. Each candidate will be given a set time to answer each question. After all candidates have responded to a question, a rebuttal will be allowed but not required by each candidate. After the question and answer period, the candidates will each give a brief closing statement. We will begin with the opening statement of John J. Crickus. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm County Commissioner John Crickus, and I want to thank the League of Women Voters and the sponsors for putting this forum on for us tonight. I want to thank all of you for joining in and watching. First, a quick bio. I was born and raised in Madison. I am a Drew University graduate, a Marine Corps veteran. I have a career in business that started in finance, and I worked in data analytics. My wife, Carol, and I raised our two daughters in Long Valley, Washington Township, where I served as mayor and committeeman. Morris County is the best run county in New Jersey by far. With Sheriff Gannon, we've worked to have some of the safest communities in the state. We're here at County College of Morris, which is the number one county college in New Jersey. Votech is a nationally recognized school. And as a local and county official, we have worked to save thousands of acres, preserve farmland and open space. We're proud of our accomplishments and looking forward to more accomplishments to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from William Bud Ravitz. Good evening, and thank you to all who made this forum possible. We intend to take county government into a new era, one that reflects the changing demographics of the county and to bring stakeholder input into the decision-making process. We have spoken with thousands of voters and have come to find out that they don't know who or what a commissioner is all about. The current county commissioners are out of touch with Morris County residents. Together with the people and the municipalities, we will bring true representative democracy to Morris County, and coupled with our government experience and vision, we will bring innovation uh, and our mantra of continuous improvement to county government, while being fiscally responsible, as we have done at the municipal level. Our opponents have passed a resolution against women's bodily autonomy, but not against the violent and hateful rhetoric spewed from the top of their ticket. We have your back, and our values are in line with the majority of residents. The choice is clear. Stick, Strickland, Sackett, and Rabbits. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett. Good evening, Morris County. I want to thank everyone as well who worked so hard to put this together. For those who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Sackett. I'm a father of four, a small business owner, and lifelong resident of Morris County. My background in economics, finance, and accounting, and my experience as a local business owner provide both the understanding and real-life experience to tackle fiscal and quality of life issues. I'm currently serving my second term on the council in Rockaway Township. I've served as council president and vice president in a bipartisan board, showing that I'm able to reach across the aisle. I'm proud to be part of a team of candidates that want to improve transparency and communication with residents and municipalities improve our resilience against flooding, improve our transportation, expand senior services and shared services, and make sure that every voice is heard. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen H. Shaw. Thank you for the organizers for hosting this candidate's night. 
My name is Stephen Shaw, and I currently serve as the Deputy Director of the Commissioner Board. I have lived in Morris County for over half a century and embraced the call to volunteer public service in my hometown of Mountain Lakes, where I served on the Planning Board, Lakes Committee, and as Mayor. Professionally, I'm a family contracting business owner and have a BS in Civil Engineering from NJIT. Because of my background and expertise, I chair the Capital Budget Committee, sit on the County Planning Board, and am liaison to Public Works in the Office of Planning and Preservation. As Public Works liaison and Capital Budget Chair, I have made investment in our infrastructure a priority, where we resurface about 30 miles of roads a year and maintain about 1,100 bridges. At our Office of Planning and Preservation, I work with the staff and the committees that oversee our robust Preservation Trust Fund open space programs. It's truly an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Morris County. I'm passionate about this county. I'm passionate and want to continue serving and looking forward and listening to all of you and sharing our vision to keep Morris County the best place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Deborah Smith. Thank you. I'm Deborah Smith, currently Morris County Commissioner. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and our sponsors for hosting this event and particularly at the County College of Morris, which is a jewel in our county. I'm honored to serve Morris County. I reside in Denville along with my husband, Stephen, who is a small business owner in Randolph. I bring both municipal and county experience to this role. Previously, I served on the Denville Township Council, also serving as council president. While on the county commissioner board, I have served and chaired our budget committee, our insurance commission, as well as our capital budget committee. My financial and business expertise prepares me well for this service. Our county tax rate has been flat for the past five years, and we have maintained our AAA re rating from Standard & Poor's and Moody's for 49 years. The team of Smith, Crickus & Shore brings a group of accomplished public servants that warrants another three years on the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Strickland. Howdy, Morris County. My name is Justin Strickland, and I'm running for Morris County Commissioner. I'm 45 years old, and I'm originally from the state of Texas, but I live in New Jersey for seven years. I've been to 38 countries, 47 states, and I choose to live in New Jersey because I firmly believe that New Jersey and Morris County is the greatest place to live in the United States. I graduated from Texas A&M in 2001, and I joined the military, and I served this country, and I learned how to be a servant leader. Uh, when I was uh, in the military, I was a platoon leader in Iraq for a year, uh, and I was also on an 11-man team living and working with the Iraqi infantry up in Missoula. I've worked in the Pentagon as a federal employee, uh, doing economic development in Iraq and Afghanistan. I've been in Afghanistan 16 times, and in those roles, I was also a servant leader. I'm currently a Chatham Borough Councilman and proudly represent the people of Chatham Borough. It's an honor to be here tonight. I thank everyone who helped put this together, and I ask you to consider voting for me to become Morris County Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. It is now time for the questions. The first question is, what are the duties of the Morris County Commissioners? Deborah Smith, we'll begin with you. It's, it's funny, um, people are saying they don't always know what a commissioner is, and we were formerly known as a freeholder. We are a board of seven members. We elect a director and a deputy director, but we have an equal vote. We oversee the operations of the county. And for example, I chair the budget committee, and we have a committee of three people. Mr. Crickus is on that committee with me. And we review the budget, we see what the needs are, and we work to provide the services to the residents so that they can benefit from the tax dollars that they're spending with us. Thank you. William Bud Ravitz, same question. Okay, I can't really uh, improve upon what uh, Ms. Smith said, so I'm going to kind of pivot to something else. And I want to talk about um, the tax rate, because we did hear about that earlier on. It's true that the, uh, the comm current commissioners did have left the tax rate stable for the last five years, but I do want to let the, the residents know that the tax rate um, that hasn't gone up is just taxes passed along to the municipalities. And the way that the county um, raises revenue is when the municipalities raise revenue, they get a portion of that, that, at that rate, they get a portion which goes into the county coffers. So keeping the tax rate flat is actually 
not helping and it's not really a big deal um, because they're raising the, the taxes on residents of the municipalities. Uh, so it's really a misnomer that they're keeping it flat. Thank you. Justin Strickland. Question is, what are the duties of the Morris County Commissioner? I get this question asked to me a lot when I'm out campaigning and talking to the voters because they just don't know. And I think that's indic uh, indicative of the fact that our uh, current county commissioners don't really get out in the communities and talk to regular residents. When I ask that question, the simple answer I give is it's very similar to the same roles and responsibilities that your city council people do. You know, they work on the roads. They're responsible for the safety and security of your communities. Uh, they work on, you know, you know, helping make your town a great place to live. And as a county commissioner, I'm gonna take those lessons I've learned at the municipal level and I'm gonna apply them at the county level. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in your communities. I'm gonna be working with your elected officials to partner with them to make Morris County even better than we all feel it is. Thank you. John Crickus. Thank you. So Morris County, the function of county government is very different from municipal government. So for example, we don't do zoning and uh, uh, pa passing of ordinances involving zoning. Zoning and planning for a town, what's residential, industrial, commercial, et cetera, is all done at the local level. The best way I like to explain the difference between local and county government is that county government is doing functions that would not be efficiently done at the local level. So for example, uh, we have the County College of Morris, which we're in right now. So we're able to provide education to thousands of students, not just young people, but people who are changing careers. We have a wonderful park system, the largest park system in New Jersey. Um, we're able to, our police now has a patrol division that's able to fill in areas. So for example, when it came time to protect uh, you know, worshiper, worshipers at Jewish synagogues over the past year or so. We've had that division that's been able to fill in. We've been, even been able to provide road salt to towns that were running short during winter. So the county has the heft to fill in where local government may need help. Thank, Thank you. Stephen H. Shaw. Yeah, the way I like to explain it when, when citizens ask about it is we sit between the state legislature and the local government, and we fill in all the gaps that are too big for the local government to take care of and too small for state government. Perfect example is the uh, pandemic, when that hit. That was county government and all of our services that were teamed together and quarterbacked that effort and got that vaccine center open. Um, that's one thing. We obviously set the policy for the county and then the county is actually run by a professional administrator and a whole staff. We have a budget of about 350 million that we oversee, and obviously our priorities are set in that budget. Public safety is the number two expense after employees in our county budget. And my favorite area, the infrastructure. So we have about a $35 million capital budget. So we're responsible maintaining 287 miles of road, county road, and 1,100 bridges. Um, so that's what a uh, county commissioner does. And we are out in the community. It's a little bit of a joke. Ask my wife, because I'm never home. I'm out all the time. And uh, she's playing Mahjong now because of that. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett. Thank you. And, and uh, just like uh, Justin said, you know, a lot of people do not know what the county commissioners do. They manage the county budget, $365 million. Mm -hmm. They approve spending on big expenses. They issue bonds for large scale projects. They appoint officials to lead county departments. They oversee county operations. And they are absent in the communities. I've been in Rockway Township for seven years. They've never come to one of our meetings besides to issue a grant for, for a picture taking opportunity. Okay, they're not working with the towns, okay, as local elected officials. We need help sometimes. We don't see them. We don't hear from them. My town, it's bipartisan. You figure they come see us, help us out. They don't. So this is a part of the government where a lot of our money is going and their budget has gone up every year. It's time to get new people in there. It's time to elect Jonathan Sackett, Justin Strickland, and Bud Ravitz. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Kind of goes with the first one. If elected, what are your top three priorities for Morris County? And we'll begin with John Crickus. Okay, thank you very much. Top three priorities start with law enforcement. Uh, you know, our opponents, unfortunately, this, this election cycle and last election cycle have talked about maybe we need to defund the police. 
We totally reject that. We totally support Sheriff Gannon and Prosecutor Carroll, because if you don't have safety, if you're not safe in your life and property, then nothing else really matters. Second is we focused on our education institutions. County College of Morris, we've put massive investments here. We have a new advanced engineering center, and we have a new culinary and entrepreneurship center being built. And with VOTEC, we're expanding here on this campus for September 2025 opening with a 500 student uh, a new, new campus in 10 in-demand fields. Third, open space preservation. We've preserved 50,000 acres in Morris County, both farmland and open space. And we'll be working to preserve, preserve the Drew Forest, where I used to play as a kid. Those are our top three priorities. I would kick in the roads and bridges also, and we've done all that with the second lowest property taxes for the county portion of the tax rate in the state of New Jersey. Thank you. Next, Jonathan Sackett. Yeah, I find that funny, uh, the comments about the police, Rockway Township, Chatham Borough, Morris Township, are the three best town, one of the three best towns in the county for the police. My son interned at the Rockway Township Police Department. Since I've been in council in Rockway Township, we have approved to make sure our police department is running smoothly. Our police department right now is the best it's ever been. So I just find that funny that someone would say that about against the police. It's totally not true. And I preach safety as a martial arts owner and self-defense. Second thing is one priority is in Rockway Township, we have Craig Mears sitting there and rotting. We came to the county commissioners to try to get that back to us. Nothing's going on. We want to get that back for our county. We want Craig Mir going again like it was a nice place in the 80s and 90s. Third thing is we talk about CCM and Morris County School of Technology. I know the schools. My son went to that schools. Okay, they are out of touch with the schools and the needs of the students. I talk to the students, I talk to the parents, lots of needs go on. We're gonna make the schools even better. Thank you so much. Deborah Smith. Okay, public safety is the most important, particularly in today's environment. Um, I know Commissioner Crick has mentioned going to, uh, covering the synagogues with our patrol staff, I mean, with what's happened in Israel. Um, education, CCM is a number one county college, as is Votech. Both help with funding from the county. Open space to deter development are some of the very important things. And we're able to do all of these. And we've actually grown uh, Votech. They're building here a building that will have over 500 more students, almost 50% uh, more in students. And this is while keeping taxes flat and maintaining our AAA rating. And I'd like to mention that our, our top three priorities that we have didn't even make their top seven list. Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Well, I'm gonna reiterate what my running mate said, public safety, education, open space, and I've always gotta throw uh, infrastructure in there. And I think when it comes to uh, education, and we're here at, at County College of Mars, something people don't realize is the impact that that has. It's a $500 million economic, uh, $500 million economic impact here to Morris County. The county citizens get a $17 return on investment for every uh, dollar that is spent, and students get a 14% uh, percent return on their investment. And our Open Space and Preservation Trust Fund program, there's been a lot of talk about that, very proud of that. But what sets us apart from other counties that have these programs, the program's been around for 33 years, but we keep modifying and adjust it. And you know, how do we do that? We actually go out to the communities, we send a survey out every few years, we get responses back, and that's why we have a trails program. That's why we have a historic preservation program. That's why we have a flood mitigation program. They all came in farmland preservation. They all came from our original open space program. But once again, you know, we looked at it and we made changes as we're doing right now with um, stewardship with our open space. Thank you. Justice Strickland. Justin, sorry, Strickland. Howdy. Um, I'm going to want to come back on the 32nd for the rebuttal on the on the police remark. I, but because I, I want to focus right now on the three priorities. Three priorities. So you're focused. I'm going to say the first and the most important priority to me is the people. You know, listening to the people, getting out in the communities, understanding that we have 39 municipalities, all with 39 different challenges and issues that that face them. And we have a responsibility as a county commissioner to listen to those and then work with those municipalities to make a difference. I'd say the next most important thing for me is overdevelopment. Mm -hmm. They talk a lot about their, their flat tax rate, but the reason that their taxes, they don't raise the taxes is because they're letting overdevelopment get out of control. Their budget was 365 million this year. That's 20 million higher than it was the previous year. 
if, if they aren't raising taxes, then how are they getting more money? They're getting more money because they're letting overdevelopment get out of control, and that impacts all the lives of Morris County, and I would make that a massive priority for me. Thank you, and we'll hear from you after we hear from the last candidate. William Bud Ravitz. I will also like to sure. take my 30-second rebuttal, too. But I will but, say uh, that I categorically deny the assertion about defunding the police. No political party has the mantle of law enforcement champion. For example, Morris Township dramatically um, democratically controlled since 2018 has continued to fully fund what is recognized as one of the finest police forces in Morris, in Morris County. Our police department wants for nothing. Between two, 2019 and 2014, there was a $100,000 increase in their operating budget. We've had 10 new officers hired since 2020, including one new headcount and four uh, school resource officers. Shame on the, on the county commissioners for not knowing that Morris Township is one of five townships in the county that are piloting the Arrive Together, um, uh, the Arrive Together initiative, which is an alternate response to uh, reduced instances of violence and escalation. It's one of the most highly innovative and sought after police programs and that has been missing from the police forces throughout the, throughout the country. Thank you. Justin Strickland, 30-second rebuttal. I want to talk about this thing that uh, Commissioner Crickus said. I'm an Army guy. Army guys, we have integrity. And Marine guys do, too. And I'm very disappointed in Crickus's integrity tonight when he said our opponents want to defund the police. He knows that's not true. And if, you, if, if he's telling you guys tonight something that's not true like that, what else is he going to lie about tonight? What else is he going to say that just is not factually accurate? So I would ask him to please correct the record. And actually, I'd also like to ask for an apology because <clears throat> it's just not true. Okay, thank you. So can I have 30 second rebuttal? We have to go to Mr. Ravitz okay, first, then, and then you'll be, That's yep. fine. Okay. You had 30 uh, seconds, please. I, I echo what, my, what Justin Strickland had said. Mar in Morris Township, we treat our first responders by giving them free pool membership. That's something that perhaps taking to the county level is that we provide free uh, education to our volunteer first responders. Something like that would be a way to give back to our first responders. We need a more regional approach uh, with, uh, with collaboration with other county law enforcement to discuss and evaluate new initiatives and to adopt new pre uh, pr best practices models and continuous improvement. Thank you. Mr. Crickus? Thank you. So one just has to look at Bud Rabbits' Facebook and you'll see uh, back in 2020 he had to defund the police uh, memo up there, which essentially said we agree with defund the police, just don't say defund the police. So that's the ba factual basis of that. What I really want to focus on, though, is that you heard Commissioner Smith, Shaw, and myself say our three priorities are public safety, education, skills development, and open space preservation. As Commissioner Smith said, and let me reiterate, those three priorities, which I think are vitally important, are not even on their list of seven priorities that they're campaigning on. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Shaw? Or uh, yeah, I have a rebuttal, but either one. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So Go I just right. want to uh, quickly touch upon uh, the overdevelopment that, uh, that they're running on and talking about. So I think, um, you know, you should know that zoning and development decisions rest with the municipality, as they should. The county does not get involved in that role. The county planning board does not do what a local planning board does. And it should be left up to the municipalities, but unfortunately, it's driven by policies in Trenton and the state. And in March, our governor signed what's called the fourth round of affordable housing legislation that's requiring massive, massive development across the state. It's democratic policy. Mr. Sackett? Thank you so 30 much. 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, earlier today, I received a message from CCM, from their staff, how disappointed they are in the county commissioners, how tuition has went up 33% here in the past six years, how the county commissioners are taking a hands-off approach to the faculty at CCM. We've been endorsed by the Morris County Council of Education Association, so I just wanted to make mention of that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're on to the next question. We received many questions that asked about resolutions being passed on issues that are beyond the purview of any commissioner board. If elected, would you continue this practice 
and why. We're starting with Mr. Strickland. Any explanation? My answer on resolutions is I think resolutions have uh, time and place, right? But I think most importantly, I think resolutions should reflect the, the people of the county and, and the residents. Um, I think that as leaders, the residents also look to um, commissioners, municipal elected leaders for, for leadership. And in tough times, it is important to provide that leadership through resolutions. Now, I think that this current set of commissioners have that voted to pass resolutions that are not aligned with the values and the morals of Morris County. And they have used their position to divide people and not bring people together. And I think resolutions are meant to basically you know, bring people together and show, hey, we are all in this together. We're one community. Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Yeah, as far as resolutions go, and I, I carried this out as mayor in Mountain Lakes, I think only re resolutions should only be dealt with that deal with uh, county government. And uh, the director on the board has a lot to do with setting the agenda uh, and, and such. And when I was director of this board, of the commissioner board, um, you know, kept resolutions to issues that affected the county, and I will continue to do that uh, if I'm reelected. Thank you. John Crickus. Yes, let me uh, second what Commissioner Shaw said. As I was director last year, we had no resolutions uh, introduced that did not affect county government. I think uh, that can be, you know, people care passionately about these issues and on both sides, and you have to respect that. But we also have to remember resolutions can take up time of our staff of our legal staff, which costs money, and therefore we should only stick to resolutions that affect county government. I, and that was Commissioner Shaw's position when he was director, that was my position when I was director, and that would be uh, our positions going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett. Thank you. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be passing any resolutions ag against what the citizens wanted. Um, we're here to represent, and um, the commissioner to pass resolutions undermining the state's reproductive health laws. Um, they've they have not worked with Moms Demand Action for a gun safety for our children, okay? They came up with uh, resolutions about uh, urban crime and gangs in Morris County. They're out of touch, as we've said, and we'll keep saying, they're not in our communities. They don't understand the residents' needs as local elected officials, meeting with the people, going to NetCon, going to different towns. No one knows who they are. They will know who Jonathan Sackett is, they will know who Bud Rabbits is. They will know who Justin Strickland is. Thank you. Thank you. William Bud Rabbits. You can just call me Bud. Okay, Bud. <laughs> keeps, it, keeps it simple. That's all right. Um, as you. I said in my opening statement, um, the County Board of Commissioners passed a, a resolution uh, against women's bodily autonomy. That had nothing to do with county government. That happened under the tenure of, of the, our three opponents. Uh, there is a time and a place for resolutions. I wrote two resolutions myself, one uh, against uh, supporting Israel against Hamas, Hamas after the October 7th attack last, last October, and I wrote in February a resolution against anti-Semitism um, that, was, that was very, very well received by, by the Jewish community. Why hasn't this, why hasn't this uh, board, county board of commissioners have done any any speaking out against the the hateful and violent rhetoric of the folks that are at the top of their ticket? Silence is complicity, and that sh should not be tolerated. Thank you, Deborah Smith. Listen. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, my fellow commissioners, uh, Rickus and Shaw, that we should be dealing with issues that are related to the county. We focus on things that are important to keep our communities safe. But I don't want to be dismissive. We understand there are a lot of important issues to a lot of voters. Some of them are on the federal and state level that we can't affect, except when we vote. But we focus on the county. But when we talk about abortion, the members of the board have diverse views. But one thing we all agree on is that a proposed law banning parental notification of minors seeking an abortion or an elective trimester late uh, semester abortions are too extreme for most residents. And I hope you would all agree with that. Thank you. 
Next question. For several years, the American Rescue Plan provided the county with funds that were dispersed as small business grants. Since that plan has expired, what can the commissioners do to support and strengthen small businesses? We'll start with you, Bud Ravitz. You please repeat the question. Of course. For several years, the American Rescue Plan provided the county with funds that were dispersed as small business grants. Since that plan has expired, what can the commissioners do to support and strengthen small businesses? It's up to the county board of commissioners to work with the municipalities. Small businesses are something of, under the purview of each municipality. And the more that the municipalities work together to share services and to share best practices, the better it's going to be for, for small businesses. I do want to say, though, that um, regarding uh, small business, I am a huge supporter. Most of this country was built on, on small businesses. The American Rescue Plan, Mikey Sherrill has brought in millions of dollars to, my, to, to Morris County. Um, as a Democratic, under Democratic uh, President Biden, uh, so much money has come in. The, the Republicans in, in the federal government all voted against it. I have to wonder whether the folks here, our opponents, would have voted against all that American Rescue Plan money had they been given a chance. Thank you. John Crickus. Thank you very much. So we have more than doubled the funding for our economic development, Chamber of Commerce, and Board of Tourism. And we merged our uh, tourism board into the chamber so that we could get even more uh, resources to promote tourism in Morris County. And that's had an effect. Morris County had the second highest increase in tourism in 2023, a 31% increase as we put more resources into that area. In addition, we're putting even more funding out because we have the 250th anniversary coming up of our country uh, in 2026, and we're also going to have the World Cup coming. So we've put real money, real investment, real ideas into promoting uh, our, our area, and we've seen an increase in business due to that. I'd also point out during COVID, Morris County government made county grounds available for restaurants in Morristown to use for outdoor uh, seating. Just one little thing that we did as part of supporting small businesses. Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Yeah, so I'm a small business owner myself. I've operated a small business in uh, Morris County. Actually, uh, business has been around for 51 years and have operated in, in uh, probably about two dozen towns in Morris County. So I know what small business owners need. I know what they want. Number one, you need to be operating in a safe, secure environment. So that's why public safety is one of our hallmarks. You also need to be working in an environment where you're not overtaxed. That's why we have such a focus on fiscally responsible budgeting and keeping the tax rate um, low. Uh, you know, additionally, um, uh, you know, we, we have, as, as Commissioner Crick has said, you know, our, our chamber that we support and we keep investing in and they help our businesses. The um, you know gross domestic um, output of our county is bigger than a lot of states in New Jersey. It's just, just having a vibrant, healthy, um, low tax, safe environment is what our small businesses need to operate. And I know because I own one. Thank you, Deborah Smith. Yes, and I'm also married to a small business owner who ne never gets to see me because I'm out all the time in the community. And I have been up at Rockaway Township. Uh, perhaps Mr. Sackett didn't notice. <laughs> Anyway, uh, for business development, small businesses, for example, at CCM, there's a business incubator. There are many programs here at County College of Morris to help people start their small businesses, help them work through it. Um, also, the school offers training, goes out into the community and finds out what are the jobs that are needed. Those jobs are the ones that we're going to invest in, and corporations have come in with uh, equipment for people to be trained on so they can go out there and live in Morris County. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett? Yeah, I, for, I forgot Ms. Smith was in Rockaway Township, and that's when she attacked the Rockaway Township Republican Mayor Michael Puzio. So I, for, I forgot to mention yeah. that. I'm sorry about that. Um, the American Rescue Plan, and I remember them, the commissioners going around giving small businesses all this money during COVID, money that Mikey Sherrill brought in. 
okay, just like Bud had said, would they have approved it, okay, because all their counterparts voted against it. They took credit for all the money Mikey Sharl brought in. As a small business owner, I understand the needs of small businesses. I attend the Parsippany Chamber of Commerce meetings, the Morris County Chamber of Commerce meetings. Okay, people need help. Our towns need help. Work, we need to work with municipalities to develop strategies to promote tourism, to promote these small businesses. Okay, whether it's putting it up on Facebook, putting it on the county website, doing more to help the people, to help build this county, help build this country, help build this state. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Strickland. All right. I, I find it very interesting that when we ask about overdevelopment, the answer essentially from the current commissioners is uh, that decisions lies with the municipalities or it's at Trenton, it's out of our hands. We can't do anything about it, right? But when it comes to this kind of question where they are touting their accomplishments of working with the chamber, the chamber is out of their hands as well. And the people they have working in, their, in, in, in the county government, there's professionals who actually interact with those chamber. So they, they take credit for the work, the hard, hard work of their professionals. And they say, oh, we can do something with business and economic development with the chamber, but they can't do with overdevelopment. They say, oh, it's too big, it's not our job. You know, but we have a different vision. The Democrats have a different vision. Our vision is that we are going to work with Trenton and we're gonna work with the municipalities so we can make a difference in all of the residents' lives. And we'll be in your communities, talking with your businesses and making a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. The new affordable housing mandates are of great concern to both residents and elected leaders. What would you do within the purview of the commissioner's responsibility to address the issue? Stephen Shaw, we're starting with you. Sure. Well, we already touched on this a bit. And once again, it shows our opponents complete lack of understanding of the County Planning Act, which authorizes the existence of counties. And I was a, a local mayor and elected official, and I certainly want to be able to control my municipality's destiny through our zoning and our ordinances and our planning board and our zoning board and people that are on the ground that know their town the best. So, but what we have happening where the county can't get involved, the state of New Jersey and the governor and the Democratic legislature, I don't think a single Republican voted for the bill that Governor Murphy signed on March 20th, I believe it was, 2024, mandating thousands and thousands of houses being built, affordable housing, which for each affordable house, you have to multiply that by five. I have the list right here, and it comes to 9,320 units in Morris County. That's 47,000 in total times two and a half families. That's increasing the population by 118,000. Thank you. Deborah Smith? I think Steve has basically said it very well, but you know, when we talk about Democrats, it is the Democrats in Trenton that you're gonna go talk to, that you say you're going to go talk to, to get them to stop this. They're the ones that set this in, in place. So I leave it there. Okay, thank you. Jonathan Sackett. Affordable housing. Yeah. It's an obligation placed on us by the judiciary, judiciary, excuse me. It's not a partisan situation. We need to respond in a proactive way to protect the character of the community and meets the needs of seniors and veterans and working family. We can't bury, bury our heads in this and just ignore it. Okay, the county has their county planning board. They can work with the local towns to help them through this. This is not a Democrat or a Republican. This is a bipartisan issue for the people. As county commissioners, we should be leaders. Okay, not ducking away, blaming Trenton. We need to take a leadership role. We have over 500,000 people in Morris County. Get all our people together, all our mayors, all our council members. Let's go down to Trenton. Let's have some conversations. Let's not just sit by and, take, and blame other people. We need leaders here. Jonathan Sackett, Justin Strickland, and Bud Ravitz were leaders. Thank you. Bud Ravitz? I don't think I could have said it any better than, than my running mate, Jonathan Sackett. He hit the nail on the head better than anybody up here. 
I'm going to, so I'm going to pivot to something else that was brought up earlier by my running mate, and, and that is why are the county commissioners still silent in the face of a threat of a strike tonight here at CCM in Henderson Hall due to unfair labor practices by the college president, Iacono? He's been the center of controversy since being appointed to the board of trustees, which is installed by the county commissioners. He is, disliked, he is disliked by faculty and staff and has been accused of having wasted taxpayer money on vanity projects while tuition has risen 33 percent since 2016. Why has the Iacono administration blocked the union from negotiating the terms of a $2.25 million grant? And why have there been three uh, no confidence votes against him? Answer that. Thank you. Justin Strickland. So affordable housing. Affordable housing. Uh, I'm on the planning board in Chatham Borough. I'm on the affordable housing committee in Chatham Borough. It's a, it's a topic that I'm very passionate about. Uh, it is a nonpartisan issue because it affects everybody. Um, as a servant leader, uh, I think it's important that you do everything you possibly can to serve those who, re who you are representing. Um, when, we did, when Trent did pass the legislation earlier this year, the commissioners missed an enormous opportunity to bring the municipalities together, to speak as one voice, and go down to Trent and say, this is what Morris County thinks about this legislation. This is what 520,000 people think about this legislation. But they didn't. They were silent. And instead, municipalities came together, bipartisan, Republicans, Democrats. I was in that group to come up with our position, and we had elected municipal leaders go down to Trenton and fill the gap, the absence of leadership by these current Morris County Commissioners. And as a current, as a county commissioner, I will be there in Trenton to represent you. Thank you. John Crickus. Yes, thank you. So as Morris County Commissioners, we've done the most important thing we can do to stop overdevelopment, and that is to preserve 50,000 acres in Morris County and counting as we work on the Drew University Preserve. Uh, it is just amazing to hear the comments here tonight because they can get all the people together they want to come up with a plan. Uh, it'll last 10 seconds in front of a judge who's going to say state law says this is what needs to be done. And if a builder says they can meet the obligation, they have a builder's remedy, you're going to have to go to court and settle with the builder. That's law that was passed by your governor, who's a Democrat, and the Democratic legislature. To say it's nonpartisan is not true. This is a very partisan bill that has imposed tens of thousands of units upon Morris County. Mayor Panulo of East Hanover did go down to testify against this, the bills that were passed. You have a lawsuit being done on a bipartisan basis, 21 towns that none of your towns have joined uh, to stop some of the more egregious parts of the bill. Thank you. We have a rebuttal from Bud Ravitz, 30 uh, seconds. Thank you. As Jonathan Sackett has said, it, this is completely non nonpartisan issue. It's in the judiciary now. It's not a Democrat or a Republican thing. Um, it's a mandate by the, by the judiciary. And rather than wasting municipal taxpayer money to fight what is badly needed, 100,000 home, affordable home shortfall in the state of New Jersey, instead of wasting taxpayers' money fighting it, why don't we get the municipalities together to figure out how and where we're going to build these things and be proactive rather than reactive and have, as Mr. Crick has said, build his remedy lawsuits up the wazoo. Justin Strickland, rebuttal, 30 seconds. What's disheartening for me, even as a resident, is this idea that the current commissioners don't even want to try. It's, well, we can't do this. It's that, the courts, you know, the, you know, it's not our jurisdiction. Like, we represent people. They expect us to act. They don't expect us to just vote uh, all in unison, all this, uh, with the rest of the Republicans on every single thing, no debate, no trying. They expect more from us, and you will get more from me, you'll get more from Jonathan, and you'll get more from Bud. Thank you. Deborah Smith? I think there's a misconception that we're not working and doing these things. We are. It's not always in the public eye, because we go and we speak with our legislators, and we fight for our residents. So don't say we're not doing it. We are. We just don't publicize it. Thank you. Anyone else? I just Go ahead, Mr. Shaw. So we have a state plan and redevelopment plan, and uh, that's actually something that our county planners are working on. And towns have the option to um, 
you know, go on their own or, or uh, you know, go with the county and have the county help represent them. Well, that's what we're doing. You know, most of the towns have petition petitioned us to work with them to get them through the state plan and redevelopment plan. And this all does, you know, tie together. And I think that, you know, nobody is, I, I've been in housing, you know, creating housing my entire life. I call it work for housing. It's, we disagree on the way to get there. The heavy handed approach from Trenton is not the way to solve the problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Right, let's go to the next question. How will you provide active transparency and communication with constituents and ensure you listen to the residents and respond to feedback? Jonathan Sackett, you're first. Thank you, and thank you so much. And uh, as a father of four and a small business owner, I'd work to change the county commissioner's meetings, okay? They start at five o'clock. You know, as a working parent, getting the kids out to activities, that, that's hard. It makes it very hard for residents to get to these meetings. I work on having Zoom or WebEx available for them. I would meet with the municipal leaders and have town halls be active and be more present in the community. I would still attend council meetings at our local level. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Justin Strickland, transparency. So I've been attending the meetings uh, since April. And I've learned a lot in those meetings and see, you know, what they share with the public and what they don't share with the public. And I think that the first thing that does need to change is that they need to not set the meetings up where there's a working session and a closed session and then a meeting where they all come together for about five to ten minutes to just all vote in unison. Um, there needs to be an opportunity to have people truly understand what's going on. There needs to be debate. The beauty about this election is you have an opportunity to vote for three Democrats. There are no Democrats currently on the commission. We are new, new voices. We will, we will be a voice for the people. We'll be in your communities, and there'll be actual conversation about the policies and the issues that are facing Morris County residents if you give us a chance to represent you uh, on the county commission. Bud Ravitz. Thank you. Um, just kind of piggybacking on what Jonathan and Justin had said. While we've been campaigning this year, we have conducted four town halls. I, I, I'd ask the commissioners when was the last time they conducted any kind of public forum or town hall with the residents. <clears throat> I would also agree that we need periodic mayor and town administrator meetings to get feedback because in a representative democracy, it's all about how we can help the municipalities, how we can help the residents. If we don't have that feedback, then we're not representing them properly, and that's not the way it's supposed to work. Regarding the, um, the, uh, the county commissioner meetings, as Justin Strickland said, we want to bring the voices of the public into those meetings. In Morris Township, we have two public commentary uh, every, every township committee meeting where the voices of the public are heard and they could talk about anything that's on their mind, not necessarily on the agenda. This needs to happen at the county level. Thank you. Deborah Smith. Uh, yes, you know, uh, first of all, when we do have our meeting at seven o'clock, which makes it a little more convenient for the working people to come, we do have a public session where the public is welcome to come. If they can't make it, they can actually send in a question in advance. I commend Mr. Strickland for having attended some of our work sessions. I haven't seen his running mates. Um, but we do have a County of Morris website. We do have newsletters. If you sign up for that, you find out a lot of what's going on in the county and what we're doing. Thank you. John Crickus. Yes, thank you very much. So we actually moved our meeting from uh, several years ago, probably eight, nine years ago, from the morning to five o'clock, the work session, uh, to make it more accessible to people coming uh, from work, such as myself. Um, our meetings, I, you know, I know, Mr. Sackett, we're a week away from the election. You might want to research this a little more. We actually do broadcast our meetings over WebEx. So they're accessible now via WebEx. And we have a transparency part of our website that has all the bills that are paid, all the budgets, audits. Uh, you know, we try and be as transparent as possible. I also think you should understand that we are out several times a week. It's a big county, 39 towns. For example, uh, this past week I was at uh, the Stickley Museum in Parsippany. 
where we had a ribbon cutting as that was being reopened. We met all kinds of people from all areas. I know Stephen Shaw is part of uh, Whippany uh, River Watershed, meets all types of people at, the, at those meetings. We have our various liaison ships, been to many Chamber of Commerce functions, where, as was referred to earlier, we have legislative leaders meet with uh, business leaders. Uh, to, so, so, so there's lots of opportunities for us to meet. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, our administrator has an administrator's meeting with all the municipalities. I think it's quarterly. Um, we are out and about in the county in all 39 towns. I say I probably have more than half of the mayor's phone numbers in my phone. Um, the joke at county is we have to increase the budget because we get a thousand business cards and I went through mine halfway through the year and it has my cell phone number on it and I think we all have that. And I get contacted constantly by mayors, Democrats and Republicans that are, you know, need help looking for, you know, looking for something and we get them what they need immediately. And, you know, once again, we're out and about in their communities constantly, all the time, listening to the residents and everything is on our website. As soon as the minutes are passed, they're on the website. I noticed that's not the case in some of these municipalities that you serve. The minutes seem to be, you know, a couple months behind. Bud Ravitz, 30-second rebuttal. Our, our, our minutes are, are right up on the website. So that's not true in regard to Morris Township. But we're talking about our, our mayor roundtables, not meeting one-on-one -on -one with the mayor, because that will take 39 meetings. We're talking about roundtables and town halls with not just administrators, but mayors and governing bodies, because that's how we're going to learn as, as, as commissioners how best to serve our constituents. And in addition, the with regard to the uh, commissioner public meetings, there is no time for public commentary. Questions have to be submitted in advance. No, that's not true. Jonathan Sackett, you have 30 seconds. I, I was talking about Zoom a little bit with comments during that also. And also talking about meeting with your towns and having these good conversations. I don't know the last time you guys been in Netcong, all Republican board, but they're not very happy with you guys. Thank you. So just Je quick rebuttal. Justin Strickland, 30 second rebuttal. Yeah, so um, talk about being in the community. <coughs> At their own mission, re ribbon cutting events. The commissioners came to Chatham Borough, the only time I've ever seen them for ribbon cutting or a ceremony where they can be seen. There's not, and they do not get into the communities to talk to the people in a situation where they can learn about the problems and the issues facing municipalities. Maybe they've gone to some, some towns, but they've not come to mind, and I've and I've never seen them. Thank you, John Crickus. You yeah, just real quick. Thirty seconds. Yeah, just real quick that uh, we do have public questions can be made by people in person at our public meeting. It's just, so submitting it by writing is an option, but people can come to our meetings and ask questions in person. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Deborah Smith. Uh, Thirty seconds. For example, this weekend I was at a Halloween party in Rockaway, in your neck of the woods, Jonathan, and talking to the residents there and finding out what their needs are. So the fact that you think we're not there, we are. Thank you. Anyone else? You've already done oh, oops, 30 sorry. seconds. Sorry about that. OK. Next question. How can the commissioners assist Morris County residents to get the training and skills needed to be prepared for the work workforce and hopefully keep workers in Morris County? necessary I can repeat it Deborah Smith you're first you're sitting here at one of the facilities at County College of Morris that definitely is doing that you also have the uh, vocational school that's on the Denville campus right now but is expanding so as I had mentioned earlier the president of the County College of Morris goes out into the community finds out what jobs are needed what training is needed for example, there's a lack of nurses, uh, dental assistants, uh, physician assistants. There will be a new building coming on the County College of Morris to provide those training skills so that people can be in that workforce and hopefully it's our residents staying in Morris County and keeping Morris County strong. Thank you. Bud Ravitz? In addition to having 
pretty new buildings, we also need to have our faculty and staff in line. And right now there are major problems here at the County College of Morris with the faculty and staff who are just about to vote on a, on a work stoppage or, or strike tonight because they don't feel that the union is being heard by the administration. That's a problem. In addition, I support uh, a free education system. When I mean free, I mean free thinking that, that county colleges must be able to address the issues of the jobs of the future and not just today. I think that's been mentioned here. I fully support educators and administrators um, in, in fulfillment of those duties, and I believe County College is a, a great place to, to be educated, but there are problems that here that need to be addressed, and I'd like to be able to be the one that helps to address them. Thank you. Justin Strickland. So <clears throat> when it comes to assisting the residents of Morris County, I want to know what actually have Commissioner Smith, Commissioner Crickus, Commissioner Shaw actually done themselves. Commissioner Smith and Crickus, they've been on the county commission for nine years. And I keep hearing from Commissioner Smith about what other people are doing. What are people are doing at uh, County College of Morris? You know, it's not about what she's done. It's about what other people have done. That's, that, that's, that's her record. And I want to make a quote that she said on October 9th at the meeting I was at. She said that, that this is not the world that I grew up in, and I don't see it getting better. That's a direct quote. You can, you can go and look at that. And that kind of attitude does not serve the residents of Morris County. It does not serve the workforce. It shows that she's not going to do the work for the, for the people. She's going to let somebody else do it. And so I would ask you, when you choose to vote, choose to vote for Strickland, Sackett, and Rabbits. Mr. Crickus? Yes, so the question is about what we're gonna do for skills for our workforce. And we, as you've seen earlier, this is one of our top three priorities. So right now, we have an expansion of 500 students of the Morris Bow Tech, which is occurring right here at CCM, which means those students will use all the great tools that County College of Morris has. And we work very closely with both the CCM administration and the Bow Tech administration and Randolph because there were some issues that we worked on, Stephen Shaw worked on because of his knowledge of construction. And you know, we uh, worked on that because it's such an important issue. And this is where we work in a part bipartisan manner. We also have planned a medical science building. We brought Senator Sarlo here as a Democrat, the head of the budget committee. He was so impressed by CCM. We're gonna have a medical science building here that will uh, both train in the healthcare area, the healthcare health science building for both medical and dental. And with all this construction going on, we're very proud of the jobs it's creating. We've been endorsed by the IBEW, the electrical workers, and by the Carpenters Union, because we have multiple projects going on here for the future workforce of Morris County. Thank, Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Yeah, well, I, I'm not gonna reiterate what my running mate said. We have been investing heavily in education. That's one of our main priorities. And it's not just done you know, willy-nilly and a shot in the dark. Our uh, we, we get our chamber together with the folks that are building curriculum here at CCM to, and the industry leaders so that they can tell what skills are needed in Morris County now and in the future. And that's why we've been doing the robust investment that, you, that we've all been talking about. I do want to address one question about the faculty and staff. Once again, it goes to a lack of understanding of our role as county commissioners and don't keep smirking with that. Um, there's a Chinese firewall between the county commissioner board and the board that runs the county college. And that has to be, and we, and you cannot, we cannot insert ourselves, which would be a political insertion into the affairs of the county college. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett. Oh, he's talking about the trustees that are appointed by the county commissioners. Um, you know, I first had experience and they don't like being, they don't like the school being called Votech. It's Morris County School of Technology. These young kids are be, in 39 towns are being shipped up to a county college, 14 year old kids with t adults in there. They should be working on what they have over there in Denville. These poor kids are running around, leaving their house six in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, coming home five, six o'clock at night and starting all over, okay? That school, has been 
left behind for many years. They only started looking into it about three or four years ago when it was brought up by Democrats. They brought up how they haven't put any money into that school. They are working on capital projects. Correct, they are. But they're not putting in increase in County College in Morris or Morris County School of Technology's operating budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any rebuttals? Yes, Deborah Smith, 30 yeah. seconds. I mean, one of the reasons that you say that you cannot take things out of context from this forum is because when you take words out of context, again, as Mr. Strickland did, when I say this is not the world I grew up in, this is not the world where we have Israel being attacked on October 7th, people rioting, uh, the world that, the things that are going on around us, the disharmony. So don't take things out of context. It's not providing the correct picture. And Justin I Strickland, got a lot more I'd like seconds. to say, but I'm sure I, I would you just can like always to say, put it in your closing. Uh, if you it's not a, it's not out of context when it when it says I don't see the world getting better, and and I think that as a leader you have to have a lot of optimism and always work hard to do your part to make the world better. Yeah, there's a lot of bad people. I was in the military. I fought on the front lines in combat in Iraq. There's a lot of bad there. I could have said, up, oh, it's not going to get any better. I'm not going to do anything about it, you know? But every day, I had to get on the streets of Baghdad to be able to see, hey, I'm going to try to make a difference. And, and I think that's the kind of leader that you need to have when you seconds. are uh, a county commissioner. Okay, thank you. Yes, Bud? Rebuttal? 30 second rebuttal, Bud? Yes, I'd like to talk about context because, yes, putting things in proper context really is important. Early on, uh, Mr. Krikus had said that I said, to, you know, defunding the police. And, and there was a, a post back in June of 2020 uh, during the Trump years when there was violence in the streets in the U.S. And the post actually had to fund the police crossed out, not once, but twice. Their mailers seem to forget that that is what the what that particular meme said. And in, in fact, context. It Thank matters. you. Yes, Mr. Krikus. Yes, so I just want to address. 30 seconds. Yes, I just want to address uh, that we've only been doing this for three or four years. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we were at uh, development and opening of this center here back in 2015, I believe it was. We were here in 2016, 2017 for the Music Technology Center. We were here three years ago for the ribbon cutting opening of the Advanced Manufacturing Center, which obviously had been under construction. So this has been a continuous policy of the Board of County Commissioners for the past 10 years. It's not something we've done prompted by Democrats three or four years ago. Stephen Shaw, Yeah, what seconds. I would just like to say, the reason why the building is being built here at CCM, there's certain synergies, plus, and ask the folks in Denville, um, that campus cannot be, there can no room for expansion on the Denville campus. Uh, there's already some traffic issues around there when the school lets out, and the Denville residents are aware of that, and the mayor is aware of that. So that's why the building's here. Number two, you're going to public school when you're going to vote tech. It costs your, the parents of the students nothing. They can get an entire year at CCM under their belt as a senior at vote tech, and then only need one year at CCM to graduate with a two-year degree. Thank you. Mr. Sackett? It's not just CCM, okay? They can go to... Fairly Dickinson, many different schools, okay? First-hand experience once again. These guys are out of touch, been in office way too long, okay? It's time to get some Democrats elected. It's time to get new people, new voices, people that are just like us, moms and dads, younger people that represent everybody. We don't need the same different people. We need a good mix of people on this board, whether it's younger, older, whoever it is, we need to all work together and bring in some new voices. Thank you. All right. And I'd just like to remind all of you, if you have more things to say, you can put it in your closing statements. And we're getting close on time. So, and we're not going to be able to get through all the questions I have. It's okay. The submitted ones. As a last question, I'd like to ask each of you, what is the one question that you would have liked to be asked this evening? Provide the question and a response. Timing will begin when you provide your response to the one question you would have liked to be asked. Okay? That's a good one. John Crickus, we're starting with you. Oh, so what immediately came to mind, I, I really appreciate that question to ask a question. 
uh, is what is your record on open space? Because we all know that overdevelopment is on everybody's mind and I won't rehash the, the policies that the Trenton has, uh, has passed down. Uh, I serve locally and proudly in Washington Township. My wife and I grew up in, in Madison and we got married and moved out to Washington Township, Long Valley. And we preserved over 4,000 acres of farmland. And working as a county commissioner, so proud that we now have 50,000 acres preserved. We have the largest park system, over 20,000 acres, uh, which people really came in handy during COVID because people want to get outdoors. And it's a quality park system. About a quarter to a third of the visitors come from, from out of state. So I think the track record, it's, it's not just saying we're gonna do this, it's not just empty words of promise. We both, uh, Commissioner Smith, Shaw, and myself, all have track records of preserving open space. It's a, it's a, space. It's a passion and uh, we wanna see that continue. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett, what question you would like to be, like to have been asked? What is your plan for increasing shared services, an easy but underutilized method of cost savings? $10 million a year New Jersey has available to apply for a grant to hire a shared services coordinator, a position that pays about $75,000 per year. Morris County has never applied for that. Why they haven't done that, I'm not sure. The county should be coordinating between towns. They're not doing that like we mentioned. Towns will have low overhead when shared services and the county will have to raise taxes. That's why they don't apply for that. Somerset County has a portal that all towns in the county could look into, kind of like uh, classified ads for shared services available for their towns. This is a way we can help out the municipalities by having this shared services coordinator working for the county. Thank, Thank you. you. Deborah Smith. I think I would have liked to have heard what is your proudest achievement? Other than marrying my husband, <laughs> it, while on the Denville Township Council, I cast the lone vote, the sole vote, to stop development of the 420 acres of the former Jersey City watershed property known as Jonathan Woods. St steep slopes, aquifer sensitive, it would have been on septic. That is my proudest achievement in office. And I would like to say that Republican, Democrat, talking about diversity on the board, well, I find it interesting that our team, from uh, the surrogate on, we have two men and two women. You have four men. Where's your diversity? Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Yeah, I thought we'd probably hear a question about the opioid crisis. I mean, that is affecting everybody uh, across the country, not just here in Morris County. And some people, you know, don't think it's a problem in Morris County. It's a very affluent county, but unfortunately, it is a problem. And we've been working very, very hard to combat that. And I'm actually pleased to be able to uh, say that with um, navigating HOPE and HOPE One, the um, programs that our sheriff has developed, uh, we, there's a, been a 48% reduction in opioid deaths. Um, and that HOPE One and navigating HOPE has had 30,000 contacts in the seven years it's existed. And it's actually responsible for saving 100 and 50 lives. So here's an area where if you look at statutorily, our sheriff's responsible for courthouse security, serving warrants, um, and it's pretty limited scope, but we're able to fund him so he can do a lot more. And he has the Hope One vehicle and the Navigating Hope that's going out into our uh, community and helping folks with substance abuse issues. Thank you. Justice, Justice, Justin Strickland, sorry. So the question I would have been like to ask is what are you gonna do on day one as the county commissioner? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the opportunity to set up meetings with all the different leaders within the county government, all the departments. I wanna to talk to them, I'm gonna to listen to them, I'm gonna ask them questions and say, hey, what can I do to help your, your, your area? What, what is something new and fresh that you think you wanna to try to serve the residents of Morris County by doing. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna schedule monthly town hall meetings where I will have an opportunity to talk with the residents and the residents you know, share what's on their minds. And I'm not saying have it in, the municipal, in a municipal style building or the, the county administration building. I'm gonna go into the communities and have a town hall in Denville, in Mountain Lakes, 
you know, in these towns where the people are. You got to go where the people are. Meet the people where they're at. And that's what I'm going to do on day one. Thank you. Bud Ravitz? I think that I'd, I'd like to be asked what I'd like to do uh, beginning on, on day one also, because that was a really good, that's a really good question. I'd like to bring the voices of the people back into county government. It, this is a representative democracy, and the current county board of commissioners do not represent the people. They're out of touch with the residents because they only show up for ribbon cuttings. I would like to, as Justin Strickland had said, I would like to hold periodic town halls for residents. I would like to hold periodic mayor and governing body meetings. This way we can bring the voices of the people back into county government where it belongs so the people can be representative and, and the county government can work so much more effectively than they are right now. I'd like to say that if, if the county government ran as half as well as Morris, the governing body of Morris Township, we will have made great strides. Thank you. I'd like to tell the audience that uh, there we got a couple extra questions in, didn't we? <laughs> I'd like to t thank those residents that submitted questions. More questions were submitted than we had time to include due to the available limited time frame. That's why we asked the candidates the last question about what they wanted to be asked. We will now have the candidates' closing statements, beginning with Justin Strickland. Thank you. Um, I want to say, first and foremost, that there's one thing that unites everyone up here, and that is, is we all care about Morris County. No one up here is a bad person. We all are unified in the idea that we want to, the best for our communities. And I want to thank the service of the current commissioners for the years that they've had. I just think it's time for them to no longer be commissioners anymore. My closing statement I just want to say is I have a different vision. We have a different vision uh, for what the county commissioner role is. It's a vision where we talk with people, we listen to people, we're in your communities, we work with the local elected municipal leaders, we work in Trenton, we influence without authority, and we are a servant leader. We serve the people, we get and do things, and where we try, we do our best, no matter how hard it is. People want to live in Morris County for a host of reasons. And one of those, one of those reasons is, you know, it's a great place to live, and we want to make it better. Thank, thank you. you. Deborah Smith? I'd like to first thank you again, the League of Women Voters and its sponsors for hosting this forum. I'd like to quote from the New Jersey Hills media that just came out recently regarding our team of Smith, Crickus, and Shaw. These are experienced candidates who have successfully steered the county through tough financial times, and Morris County is in excellent fiscal shape with a top bond rating. The three are fiscally conservative, have minimized county tax increases, and have produced a lot of bang for the taxpayer's buck, including massive improvements and expansion of both the County College of Morris and the Morris County Vocational School District. They are tested and proven leaders. They've clearly earned through hard work, prudent planning, and fiscal constraint, much deserved re-election. We ask for the, you to vote for the team of Smith, Crickus, and Shaw. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Shaw. Once again, thank you to the debate organizers and the public. I want to thank my wife and family because without their support, I could not be doing any of this. You know, Forbes, U.S. News, and others consistently rank our corner of New Jersey among the top places in the nation to work, live, and raise a family. And ranks also as one of the healthiest locales in the United States. Without question, this county is simply the best place for growing families, young professionals, and business owners. That did not happen by chance. It was by thoughtful design and decades of strong leadership. We are one of New Jersey's most commercially vibrant regions, home to successful companies leading the nation in their fields. That dovetails well with our top-ranked School of Technology and County College of Mars, where we've invested wisely in the expansion of facilities and programs to help our next generation and their families. The people who call Morris County home enjoy a high quality of life because of the long-term investments we have made in public safety, education, infrastructure, and open space. With this election, the voters have a choice. We respectfully ask that you choose the proven leadership of Smith, Crickus, and Shaw. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Sackett. You've heard a lot tonight. You've heard how great things are and change is not needed. You've heard three people that are optimistic 
about our future, and three that think the status quo was fine. I personally enjoy change and challenges that life presents to me. I've spent the last two years on this trail, missing my kids' sports games, conferences, concerts. I've done this because I love Morris County, and becoming your next county commissioner is my passion. I want to serve and truly listen to the voices of our residents. I'm here to help my mom's generation, my generation and my kids' generation to have everything they always want in life. It's time for change. We can be better and stronger together. With your help, please elect Jonathan Sackett, Judson Strickland, and Bud Rabbits for County Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Bud Rabbits. Uh, thank you, and thank you to everyone who helped bring this forum uh, to, to you and those who have watched at home. According to thousands of resident, residents, our, our, our team has spoken to, there is a big disconnect between residents and the county commissioners, a disconnect on priorities and the changing demographics of the county. The county commissioners have not engaged residents or municipalities in decisions that affect them. County residents do not know how their tax dollars are being spent. They're concerned about a complete lack of transparency and that it's time for new voices, new ideas, and new experience in envisioning for the future. It's time for the complacency to end. It's time to stop the rubber stamping of the same old, same old. If we thought everything was great, then we wouldn't be spending so much time and energy to make the lives of Morris County residents better as we've done in our own municipalities. Strickland, Sackett, and Ravitz are successful, experienced elected officials who will step into the role of county commissioners as, and hit the ground running. We represent the new generation of leadership who believe the democratic values of the majority and the true spirit of representative democracy will bring your voices into the program. And, hi, Mom. Okay. Hope I made you proud. Thank past. you. John Crickus. Yes, thanks again to the league and to the sponsors and for all of you for joining us tonight. In Britain, during the darkest days of World War II, the British had a slogan, keep calm and carry on. Deb, Stephen, and I, as your Morris County Commissioners, have carried on, brushing aside distractions, staying focused on working to bring you the safest communities, the most beautiful parks, well-maintained roads and bridges, quality education and skills training, and doing it as efficiently as possible versus our neighboring counties where county taxes are 70% higher. We work in a bipartisan fashion for the good of all residents, because you're our friends, you're our neighbors. We see you at the soccer fields, at MPAC, at fall festivals, at our favorite breakfast spot for the egg and cheese on a bagel. Let's keep Morris County strong. Let's keep Morris County moving forward. We respectfully ask for your vote for the team of Smith, Crickus, and Shaw for Morris County Commissioner. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. I'd like to thank the candidates for their participation today for deciding to serve the Morris County community. Thanks to those members of the community who submitted questions. Voting is your right and your responsibility. This is how we make democracy work. On behalf of the sponsors of this event, the Daily Record, the Morris County Chamber of Commerce, the NAACP of Morris County, and the League of Women Voters of the Morris area, I hope you found this event, this event an informative one. Remember to visit www.vote411.org for information about your entire ballot. Thank you.